okay, what happens at Cooper Road Mini when we're not actually right in the middle of putting a transmission together? And even if we are, we're also working on our uh, Porsche 911 taillights. And I was detailing the rear bumper and doing a few things and had occasion to take them out. And holy, are they heavy. Uh, to have these um, incredibly heavy light fixtures at the rearmost corners of a rear heavy car had me scratching my head. So I went on a bit of a lightning binge, as I'm prone to doing. Rebel Racing. I was waiting for the carbon fiber ones, uh, which looked just lovely, but they are not to be had here in the last six months or so. And so I settled for the fiberglass ones, and I'm kind of glad I did. These are, these are extremely light, extremely strong, um, and the way I'm going to install them is going to result in a much lighter and much more durable package than the original. Um, so the way I'm mounting these, let me sneak over here to one that's already somewhat assembled, though not finally and not painted, obviously. Rather than chopping out the back with the hole saw, after paying how much for all this stuff? The first uh, part of the instructions is to a two and three quarter hole saw. Now, have you ever cut fiberglass even with a fingernail file? It likes to chunk. And I wasn't too keen on that idea. And uh, I had originally ordered the bezels with these, thinking they might sit a little too deep. I'm glad I didn't now, because this is what they look like mounted from the front after a bit of trimming and custom fitting. And that's what we're showing here. But when you see what I found on top of this fixture after taking it out, if you sight down where this thing sits from the back of the uh, Porsche 911, you see about a foot wide rear tire down there. And everything that that tire throws up here, yeah, see all these little, there's no damage here, but that was like bits of, you ever drive through fresh asphalt repair? That little ticking that you get after your tires pick up the bits? This is where they landed. <laughs> and so this thing catches everything and having the back exposed after chopping those out and having this entire fixture held on by the lens screws, unless I completely misunderstood. Um, once you've removed that entire back, there's nothing left to screw these to. And I was not keen on the idea of those little tiny lens screws holding the whole thing to the fiberglass. So no bezels but mounting the uh, Hella fixtures from the front with only those two holes and one more hole for the wiring. This is a very durable piece. Nothing's going to sit on top of it like we found here. Um, and once we attach this, uh, we've removed, I'm telling you, close to, I think these two things, the stock lights weigh about as much as the rear bumper. Uh, over here, four or five ounces and a much more durable I think a better looking package, but it's a modified car. It's okay, don't worry. The instructions made me nervous right away because you're supposed to take a two and three quarter inch hole saw and hog out the middle of that. But I inspected these things carefully and I decided that a far better way to install them is to fit them in from the front. These hella light fixtures almost fit. They just, they sit about up here. The metal one. This is the one we start with. There's two of these, if you notice. The brake lamp, the red light one, is a plastic backplate. So first I fit this one into the bare raw housings. And you can see here I'm very close. But if I look carefully, I can kind of tell where we're running out of track. I need a little bit more space here for it not to wobble. So I custom fit them. My ancient $5 grinder. So once this is fit, I screw the other one to it and then take a little tiny scroll saw. I'll show that step next. And then, this is the other one, the brake light unit. It has a sort of a fiber, sort of a plastic ABS backing. And so by screwing it to the one I had already made fit, using it as a template, uh, the brake light unit has sort of a, a drain at the bottom. It was sliced into the drain 
and started my cut and gently sawing my way around because the way it's made there's like an extra little raised edge there and that's exactly what I'm cutting off just right around the edge there you can still see where the sharp edges reshaped my fingertips but um, here's the piece that's cut off Let me slip it off the saw it's just that rim we've uh, now shaped it exactly once I deburr all this fuzz exactly like the one we so carefully fit and so after just a bit of deburring with the things you see here and to show without my custom phone holder let me set in place first time I try this one there's the drain hole at the bottom and it's kind of it's just as I want it's not quite sitting in there there's no side to side movement at all so what I intended to do was to radius the edge the back edge here which I cut along my template such that it fits perfectly in here and when the screws go in there's no flexing of the fixture affecting the way the lens goes in. Shall I jump ahead? Beauteous. We'll talk about durability. Uh, when I put the wiring in, there'll be just nothing uh, that can smack the back of that. No exposed housings, hardly any wiring in a durable package. Driver's side, so left tail lamp. We're going to take the harness to make it work over here. But here's the critical bits once I disconnect it. This black with silver striping goes down here to the single bulb turn signal. This beige, as most Porsche stuff, is a ground. It goes back in to a ground loop. <clears throat> This one here, gray with a brown stripe, that's reverse. That's the reverse light, which is no provision for here, but we'll come up with something for that. This thick black with a green stripe, that's the powerful brake light. This one here, is it whitish gray, light gray with a red stripe. That's the running tail lamp, which we'll use also. Well, some weeks or uh, months have elapsed since I fit these assemblies into the housings here. Uh, you know, surrounded by other projects. You know, you got to design things and it takes time and uh, priorities change, understandably. But let's take a look at how this is going. Once I got the assemblies screwed in, um, I realized, and you can see a little bit of what I had to do here, that it really wasn't going to fit the shape of the opening that well as these fiberglass things are made. You know, they're close, they're the right shape, but the curve wasn't quite right. And you can really understand why people sort of give up on these. You see these for sale, people uh, put them up on the forum, you know, oh, I bought these a few years ago and then I decided to keep the car stock. Well, because when you go to install these, and in fact, you know, we talked about the difficulty and the, the risk of cutting these open. Here we got the day's sunlight charging in the door at us. Um, you know, it is a difficult thing. You've just paid uh, many hundreds of dollars for the kit, and uh, the first step, I bet you a lot of people have destroyed them. And so you go to put them in with the sheet metal screws, as they tell you, by hanging brackets off here and there, and... It just, it's not going to hold that well. Um, you're going to have a hokey fit, and that's not really acceptable um, on a Porsche. You just bolt your original ones back in, the 20 pounds of stuff back here, um, and call it good. But you can see what I did here. I had some of this uh, eighth by three quarter, just bar stock aluminum from the local hardware store. I was making a bracket for the Mini Moke. Had some left over and I started eyeballing how could I force these fiberglass housings into the right shape, get the right curve on them. So I made this aluminum bracket, very carefully lining it up. You can see it's, it, it's off kilter a little because I take advantage of the locations of the mounting screws for the light fixtures. And then I designed it in such a way, this curve right here, this section right there, 
and this very special alignment here. You can see how I made this such that I'm forcing the fiberglass to open up a bit and very carefully trimmed this end here such that when you screw that screw down tight, that little tab locates this perfectly to the contour of the body. Now that's a lot of eyeballing and you can see why weeks have gone by and other things, but it worked really well. Um, by carefully test fitting this thing over and over, and I haven't shown the body side yet, this was a bit complicated here because I did not just want to have a single bracket hanging off here. The instructions just told you to kind of, and the bracket wasn't included in my kit. I didn't like the idea anyway, and so I made this very stout bracket. Um, I discovered that the five millimeter screws in these wells were almost identical to 1032 screws. And so a very strong piece of, I think it was like a drawer from a desk, thank you, my friends at Mini Mania. I noticed it lying in a heap of rubbish one day and I said, aha, these screw mountings take nice big screws, not big enough to be hideous on taillights, but much better than just punching a hole in sheet metal and trying to hold this whole taillight assembly in with two little screws. So this bracket here, you can't see the back side of it now, and I'm not too keen to take it apart. Let's see if the phone will fit. I can't see what I'm doing, but if you see in here, I, put, I, I actually used copper tubing to make spacers and enabled me to lo locate this bracket perfectly such that I could with contouring this to fit the back side of the fiberglass, I could really force the assembly into the position I wanted and the location I wanted. Up and down, I had, I had to adjust this one down slightly as I assembled it. But the result is you're able to force that housing to sit exactly where you want it with stout screws that aren't just gonna wobble out of sheet metal um, in fact, here I did a slight modification rather than punching a hole like in the side like the directions tell you and using a what, number six screw, you gotta be kidding me. Um, I was able to slightly reshape this and with my bracketry uh, be able to screw it in nice and tight and pull it into place. Um, I'll show this maybe if there's anything interesting. I've gotta take it apart to paint it um, and fully install the lenses. How did it turn out? Let's have a quick look. Look, it's just fit. Now people give up on these. I really like the look. And uh, keeping it black keeps it subtle. But even with a dirty car, you can see how you're able to perfectly match the contours such that it doesn't sag inward, outward. Over here as you tighten this up, that little tab I showed locates it absolutely perfect. Now, this isn't the final assembly. I don't have the wiring hooked up yet, so it might even get better as I go with it. But you can see, I think this worked well. Let's have a look at the uh, disassembled left side, the driver's side. I uh, showed this bracket here installed. Let me show you the, uh, the trick bit of this design here. Aside from you know the specific shape and angle and depth of this tab here that then allows this screw to tighten the housing up against the body opening right where you want it rather than just tightening that screw into a far away anchor. Um, but this bend, I made a quick mention of it when it was assembled. I pre-bent it, allowing me to straighten that to further flex the shape of this. And so the way it's mounted kind of off center coming up at a slight angle lets me affect both the twist in combination with the tab here that tightens it up to the body and the bracket I showed here, which has a very specifically shaped, and I'm gonna get the, my camera upside down here, but it leans up against this curved surface in such a way that it applies tension that way as you tighten the screw because the back of the tail lamp fiberglass, the strong thick part here where the seam bends over, has a ramp to essentially keep this nice and tight and position these corners precisely for the correct up and down angle in combination with the ability to straighten or bend this to affect the overall curvature. 
a lot more complicated than it looks, but it's only a few very lightweight, simple bits. You can see I'm, we're going to run a ground on one side from the housing. This plastic housing has a ground strap side to it. And this one here, we're just going to run a tooth washer and a ground from one side, connect the two grounds to the existing wiring loom, and run it to the body. Um, and that'll be essentially grafting the standard remains of the wiring harness, which wasn't too lovely down here, but we're revising it and mounting it into these Hella fixtures as cleanly as possible. I showed the tiny, tiny, those are the wire holes. On this side, I'll have to run a little bit bigger one to run the, uh, the existing terminal, but it all works out very nicely. Well, they're looking pretty good, but let me show one final modification that I elected to do here to install these sort of these side uh, baffle things. I forget what they're actually called. Um, they come with this lip up here, which looks very small and thin. If you go down the cross section, wow, that's a piece of paper. But I could not get this side um, in there such that I could then put the light in. So I elected to just cut that piece off and install this after the light. I just couldn't get it to go in uh, without risking damage. Speaking of damage, these, now these are the aftermarket ones. These aren't that expensive. You can spend a lot more for the genuine Porsche. Maybe they're a little more flexible, but I could not get this reinforcing wire to go in here where the other one came out. Uh, without risking damage. All I was doing was slipping the tool and risking poking um, this kind of rubber. If you jab it with a screwdriver, you end up with a white mark. And so when I saw that was going to happen, I decided, okay, forget it. I'm not going to damage them to install this reinforcing wire. Frankly, they seem stiff enough. And so the next step here, you hate to do this with new parts, cut this little seam off here. It allows the order of assembly to be more convenient for these lights. All right, our video wouldn't be complete unless we showed, yes, the car is not perfect yet, but we're gonna show the lights installed and how they work. Let me go over here, first of all. I've got a helper today. I'll just turn on the lights. That's the running lights. You can see I use these little LED lights in there. All right, now, step on the brake. Okay. Ooh. Now let go of the brake. Okay. Nice. Step on the brake again. Now signal down. Wow, let go of the brake. Okay. So that's just the signal. Now step on the brake. Okay. Excellent. Now the other side, same way. Now signal up. Okay. Nice, now let go of the brake. Hey, a perfect one. Now turn off the signal okay. and step on the brake. And that's how it works.